Besides trying to make headway on my project number one recently, I've also been working on other things. If you see that, that's a big pile of lumber. I had a number of downed trees back there, and if they sit there and rot, sure they can be used as soil, but I want them for firewood, so I've been cutting them and splitting them lately. That's been one project I've been working on. Another project I've been working on recently is putting a fence around this building and redoing some of our pasture. Um, now I have a fence all the way back to there, eh, 30 or 40 feet, and then all the way out to the edge here with a gate here. So at night, we can lock up whatever animals are in this pasture, have them be here, use the shelter, and then during the day, we can let them out, like these two here, Jacob and Thunderkill. Um, we can let them out and they can take care of one of two pastures here. Um, across the way we have the senior pasture on the other side of the driveway. This is the associate pasture. And then we're gonna have a bottom pasture there. But a lot of this internal fencing I'm getting rid of, it helped us for the time that we got started. The original pasture was just this middle one here when we got our first three sheep, which were Shetland Finns. It was what, dandelion, raspberry, and Buckington was our ram. We ate him two years ago maybe now. And since then we've been letting the Jacob sheep rams uh, breed our Shetland Finn ewes. But um, I'm just gonna have two big open pastures here. With the amount of increase of our flocks, it makes most sense just to have one big pasture there, one here, another one there. Then we've got our woods over here. We're gonna have a bottom pasture there, a back pasture, and then on the other side of the garden, and then just a little cut across the top of the garden, which is where some of these resources are going to go to make that kind of little funnel. So we'll be able to rotate the animals around the entire thing. And there's a number of reasons why Somebody may want a small area um, to keep them kind of cooped up in at certain times. Number one is it'll give your pastures a chance to grow. Number two, when you let them out for the pasture, um, you may wait, want to wait until the dew is gone. In the morning, when the grass is wet, is the time when most of the parasites are gonna be creeping up um, onto the blades grass because it's wet, and then if the animals eat that, then they're more likely to get certain worms and certain things. So if you let them out later in the day after the dew is gone, you can have a healthier flock or herd or whatever you're running. And it's just one thing we're working on. So this here, we'll be able to take care of these two pastures. I think I'm gonna build a lean-to off the back of the garden shed for there. I'm gonna build a tree house in the back pasture that'll have an under area where the animals can be, and then the mini barn will take care of the two pastures there. So that's been one of the other things I've been working on besides my top priority. And of course, having our animals take care of as much as they can of the lawn mowing, but also not um, letting them decimate our pastures, which we have done in times past, is a good priority this time of year. Moreover, um, letting them Oh yeah, moreover, letting the garden, you know, do what it needs to do at this time of the year, which is crucial, is also very important. So although I have a top priority, at least that's what I claim, right, of taking care of the root cellar, there's many other things that also kind of have to be going on at the same time in order to have this homestead function the way that it should. Because um, if I'm not gardening, or if I'm not raising any of my animals, then I really don't have anything to put in my root cellar um, and it'll just be a storm shelter, which is also helpful, but hopefully that makes sense. And today I got another load of compost. Wow, he's already going. He's already trying to fill these buckets. Grab a trailer, grab a bunch of buckets, grab a shovel, put a kid in the mix, next thing you know, three-year-old's hard at work. So we're gonna fill these buckets, get top, top dress some of the garden beds, and see where they go. And some stuff around here too looks kind of interesting to me. Because anytime I top dress one of these, I'm gonna have to remove that stuff. I can either compost it and turn it back into soil, or I can feed it to the sheep. But then in some areas like here, I think these might be tamarillos. I gotta smell them. Not sure if these little guys are the native guys or Ah, uh, they're not tamarillos.
Well, that worked out well. How'd you do, bugger? Good. How many buckets do you think you filled? Four. Four? How many did you fill? Nah. Yeah? So, I still got a number of buckets that have stuff in them. I got a couple move off of there. Number over here. But, oh, I guess I got that corner to do here. This bed with this blue curly scotch kale is, uh, is redone. That's good. I added a layer around all my plum trees here that we actually took our first YouTube payout ever and bought these plum trees so we'd have something to remember it by. That little bed in the middle, these couple here and this one here. So I'm still probably gonna top dress this one, this one over here. This one I might let run. I'm doing an experiment with the sun chokes. This one I'll add in some places, but this green, um, mustard greens are ready going to seed. Add a layer here, finish that. Some on top of those probably. Over here, and there's a couple other ones as we head up farther that way. But I actually, um, this is all I want to do is just get this trailer emptied because I have another load of stuff to pick up that I gotta go to a different direction and take care of some business. But time is of the essence, so thank you for my wonderful helpers. You done great? You want help next time? Isn't that cool too? Before we even really start any formal like homeschooling, we teach them to work. So they bring that to the table as they continue through the rest of their life. And uh, you know, they want to. They come out here and they run to come help, which is pretty cool to see. Yeah, baby, we gotta go. That worked out amazingly, guys. I uh, knew I had to go to town, so when I was getting all this stuff out, I grabbed the trailer, just because I figured there's some free pallets I can pick up sometimes. Um, I had to grab some hay, and they happened to have free mulch at the recycling place. You can see there's a little bit of alfalfa stuff on top of there. I got a, a hay thing I'm working on for one of these next couple days to give me some better stuff. I just do not want Bermuda grass on my property as much as I'm able to avoid it. I can cover more of that in the future. But got a number of things. Monster truck is weeding a raised bed back there because where we grow our sunchokes, they shoot out into the pathway. And I don't want to lose those plants. They're good plants to have. I don't mind having them, but I don't want them to grow up, you know, into some 12 foot tall things in my pathway. So I got to remove them from where they are. And I'll of course be sharing them with my friends and other things too as days go by. But, mm. Gonna start another bed over there, just so I've got more of them growing, and we'll see what happens with this one this year. The other year we harvested 100 pounds out of there, and last year I left them just to see what would happen. Because they say they pretty much 10x each year, so who knows how many might come out of there. But I'm gonna empty some of these buckets real quick into some of the beds I still wanted to, and then I'm gonna mulch some of these paths with that, because tomorrow I may go again. Um, the place that I get the compost, or sorry, the place I get the wood mulch also periodically has free compost. The free compost is great. It's very similar to the compost I just paid for. But it's not available right now. It's not there for free. So this is costing me more than I'd like this year to get started on gardening, but I'll tell you what, it's looking really good and I've got a lot of stuff I need to be working on. Um, if the wood mulch holds up too, in a number of these places, I'm gonna go down to the bottom layer of my rocks, lift them all out, bring the ground up flush with wood mulch, and then put the rocks on top so some of these beds will be even deeper at that point just by doing that. So 
I got my work cut out for me. Boys are already working. I'm sitting here talking. I need to switch up my game and start working on working. So <clears throat> sometimes we never really know what's gonna happen. It's just a matter of where we start working. This area I've got to redo so hard. This is where the cold hardy kiwis are gonna be growing. And um, a minute ago, a lot of it looked like this coming up the backside. You know, that should be a wood mulch path. For the most part, it's a lot of chickweed. There's some other stuff mixed in there. But Monster Truck has been grabbing them up, throwing them over there, and Dodge is eating them. So what I want to do is I'm going to rough this up a little bit more, try to uproot any of these guys, lay down a thick layer of mulch, and then finish picking the beds and... Um, then top dress those with some more of that compost. But the goal is just have this all suppressed and keep it as mostly a walking path. Ain't that right, Blizzard? Yeah, it's a lot more entertaining for Dodge than it is for you, isn't it? Okay, don't fight with him. Right, Dodge? No fighting. Boy, his head looks weird when you shear them. And boy, he's happy to have those extra weeds. He's keeping a whole big long area all the way down to there. Kind of clear right now, but he's doing a really good job. He's keeping a lot of it nibbled down. So when we weed the garden and give him treats, he likes that. Right, son? Yes, sir. Do you think you can take care of this area? So I can maybe wood mulch up it? Uh, if you want to do that today. I want to see if you can do it. Start at the ground level, either from this side or that side, and work your whole way across. Everything there can be tossed to him. And then I'll check up with you on the camera and people know if you did a good job or not. They're gonna know. You ready? Yeah. Yes, sir. What do you got? Uh, some sort of crab spider. Oh, wow. I'm not sure I've ever seen one that color. We get a lot of yellow ones out in our garden. Do you remember where they go? Uh, yeah. On what? The toothache flowers. Yeah, the yellow toothache plant flowers, but this guy's super cool too. All right, enough nature appreciation, back to work. This one is a little interesting. This was a gift from Miss Rebecca Wagner. I'm not sure if I still have the footage of us opening it because some SD cards got ruined. If I do, I may insert it here. So I don't know, a random package at the old post office. Little Peppers were curious, so they were gonna open it. Can we? I guess so. Hopefully it's nothing too crazy. A box inside a box. Hold on, hold on, stand that up. Remove all, let me read this quick. Remove all packaging before giving to children adult supervision recommended when using these toy tools. Turn it, so otherwise what? they can see. Oh, what? Let me see, see. flowers, garment. Oh, just for, flowers. just for kids. Well, let's open that up. Oh, it says, hold on, what's the top say? Ship with the original box, do not open, okay. Well, what's that there, child? These are some edible flowers. Let me see. There's a little card. Yeah, I was trying to look. Aww. Gourmet edible flowers, approximately one ounce. So this is actually just the uh, the edible flower mix, and it is for planting. Wow. Huh? Yeah. Poppy, you can eat those flowers. You may. After you plant them. Thank you, know. you Munster. And darling, without giving away too much details, can you read the card? It says, Little Peppers, I know you want to help in the garden this spring, so I thought you could use some tools your size. One request, please plant Mama Pepper a beautiful flower garden. Seeds included from Rebecca. Oh, wow. 
Oh, awesome. It was who you thought it was. <laughs> well, let's look at that. Your size tools. Oh, ow. Wow. Okay. So, these are from Mrs. Rebecca Wagner, and she also sent us what, child? Um, some Little House on the Prairie books. And what are we doing with the Little House on the Prairie books for right now? Um, Mama Pepper is reading us this one right now as our... Um, oh, just part of your learning yeah, and stuff? part of our learning and stuff. And I've read all of them about... The so, Mama Pepper Bye. will read them a chapter. And then she'll have them draw a picture of the chapter and then write down a couple sentences to go with it, right? Yep. That's what you guys do every day? Let me see some of those tools. What do you got, Monster Truck? What's that one called? A rake. A rake. <laughs> so what do you got there, Sweet Pepper? A purple shovel. Purple shovel. Hey, Red Pepper! You got something red. What is it? A hoe. A red hoe. And Green Bugger. <laughs> what do you got? Oh, I don't know. You don't know what that is? It's a rake. A rake. A rake. Do you like rakes? And hey, show them what else you got in your other hand. What's that? Tape measure. Tape measure for working. We're going to build a doghouse soon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're going to have to make a special spot in the garden shed for y'all's garden tools. And I think I've got just the things to do uh, to hold them somewhere for you guys. Very cool. What do you guys say? Rebecca Wagner. <laughs> Thank you very much. You guys want to open that box too? Yeah. yeah. What's in there? Um, see. What? <laughs> Bugger! <laughs> I bet you that box is just full of candy and he snuck in there and ate it all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> what do you got, boys? Uh, tools. For what? My garden. For the garden? Okay, I'm thinking the two that Bugger's got are probably going to be least effective, but those other two should work pretty good. But they're going to use these. Why don't you run over there and show me what you're going to do with them. You can see here I already did this, and on this area I did lift up all the rocks, put a layer of mulch underneath, and then bring them back up to the surface level because I'm going to add some stuff to that side of it. Oh, whoa! Is that the big rake one? Yeah. Well, just drop it over the fence then, huh? Yep. Hey, Bugger, that one's probably not going to be tough enough for that. Get on but, you guys be careful with them. Know they're tools, not toys, and do the best you can, all right? Yes, sir. All right. Boy, he got all this cleaned up real good. We'll see. I love it when a child can do a, a thorough job. Very good. And Dodge appreciates it. Ain't that right, Dodge? This red hoe over here, Bugger, you can grab. Yeah. What you got, Dodge? Oh, yeah. Weed eating machine. Aha. Uh -huh. So I decided I might as well do this right. If you see these guys growing here, these are the sun chokes, the Jerusalem artichokes. What they are is this big tuber. This is a big delicious tuber right here. And from the main plant, it shoots out these little runners. They form these tubers and if you don't collect them, they'll sprout a new plant. I've got a whole tray of them here. And I really wanted to take some when they were just in tuber form, maybe offer them up in our Etsy shop. I may try that next year. Here's a good example of one where you've got this long runner that came out from the parent plant and then you got the sprout coming up. These are gonna be relocated now to that other one. And um, any little broken piece of the root could actually start a new plant. So this real rich soil in this pathway, which just was wood mulch, where it kind of met with the clay a couple years ago, I'm actually going to use in that raised bed over there and then fill this in with mulch. So in the way that I do this, I generate a lot of rich soil on my own land. Uh, obviously you get a lot of plants that reproduce after their own kind. And then, you know, with the free mulch I bring in, I can throw that here over the course of a couple years. I've got beautiful soil much better than what I'd naturally have here in the Ozarks. It'd mostly be rock or clay and um, got a great growing medium. And even in a situation like this, 
where I'm pointing out that this is costing me more than I would like to by building with these free sources. It's also dropping the cost though at the same time that buying like that compost I showed you earlier is costing me money. And if you think about how, how much we save by growing our own food, propagating our own plants, saving our own seeds to invest a portion of what we save in some good growing medium for our plants is just wise because it gives us a better return on our food investment. <laughs> yeah, just one little guy the size of like a, I don't even know what's that small. Smaller than a quail egg, whole new plant. So it often turns into being more than you'd wish to do at the time, but the end result is really good. So check this out. Here, I removed everything that was coming. I moved the rocks from there. I got three of those completely full, those trays, and five buckets, I think at least, of soil from here. What I'll do is I'll mulch this whole thing in and then replace the rocks. It'll look real nice by the end of it, but got a lot of stuff to deal with first, so. Here's one of these buckets. And the plan is simply going to be, head past these little workers, son, use the pitchfork. I think I'm gonna sprinkle this stuff out here and then kind of bury them into here. So this is the bed. I'm just gonna dump all these out and just kind of bury them in. And once they're all buried, I think we got rain coming in tomorrow or the next day. So that should work. So here is this, that looks pretty good. And I know you guys are probably thinking, well, hold on, if Monster Truck was helping over here, he must've been done with his other task, right? Well, we're gonna go find out. So Red Pepper, those tree trays and that shovel to the garden shed, Pinky Pepper, those over to this trailer here. Oh, look at somebody's, <laughs> look, somebody's eager to help again. There you go, yeah, she's gonna, we're gonna fill them up and she's ready to go. Wow, wow, all day, you're just ready. <laughs> so I wanna dump my mulch in here quick and get that put back together. Monster truck, let's see what happened. Oh yeah, that's awesome. What's he doing? He was cleaning out this whole thing, it was just a jungle. Yeah. <clears throat> you get to start the evening chores? Yeah. And then can you do a baby, a sheep video for me soon? Yeah. And help with the video on the Cheva, on the dog? Yes. Okay. So daylight will not let us continue too much with this video, but I will show you the restoration of this and we're gonna keep going until we can't see. This looks great. So if you see across there, nice path now. See across there, nice path now. 
all those extra resources are gone. We had good soil here. We had extra sun chokes. I still got to pull the rest of the dead ones out and chipper shred them. Monster truck still going hard. Bug, don't compact that. Okay, you stay on the path, stay out of the beds. Yes, sir? Who wants to do the outro? I think you were first. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I hope you like it. Monster truck out. <laughs>